to what extent the heretic commits an error of doctrine, meaning he believes something about the nature of God, which although permissible, meaning not sufficient to remove him from the ambit of Islam, is nonetheless a serious error. And of course, as you know, Sunnis believe that uh, the Shiite view of history and about the caliphate is, amounts to heresy um, because um, it is an untrue account of what took place. Uh, and uh, maybe the audience can engage me uh, when uh, after the lecture if there's particular questions of history that you would like to tackle with me. My own view is that the you know the Sunni view of history is quite eclectic and uh, uh, broad enough to encompass Shiite grievances. Uh, sadly, uh, it is felt that it is not enough. The third grouping would be schismatics, meaning people who are heretics who then go on to found a whole group of people who are also heretics, and in that way undermine not only the unity of the faith but pose an active military threat. Um, and these three groups, incidentally, are found. Um, this terminology I borrowed from the uh, from the Catholic Catechism. The Catholics still use this vocabulary in identifying certain people uh, when they're looking at. Of course, in the past, they would also burn people at the stake for heresy, uh, and apostasy also was punishable. Uh, for example, in the time of Justinian, uh, by death. So this is not unique to Islam. But it would help if we're looking at denominational differences. What's unusual about Islam's denominational differences, in my opinion, is that they arise despite the fact that the Quran is a very short work and very explicit in defining what Islam is and what faith is. This cannot be said, in my view, of other scriptures. For example, I think that the New Testament does not give a clear description of what a Christian is. Uh, and of course, Jesus was not a Christian, whereas Muhammad was certainly a Muslim. Um, and also the fact that the New Testament canonizes certain differences. For example, the views of James and the views of Paul on the faith and um, meaning the grace versus law debate are, in my view, significantly different. Now, of course, I don't mean to imply that um, um, if we caricature the views of James and caricature the views of Paul, I mean even after a nuanced and sophisticated study uh, with responsible New Testament scholarship, in my view, the views of these two apostles on faith and works do differ, and I'd be very happy to in fact, I'd love to debate to Christians in public on this point. Uh, in Oxford, no one seems to have done with me so far. Because, you know, the Oxford academics, their method of dealing with somebody who disagrees with them is to ignore them, especially if it's a clever foreigner belonging to another religion that they don't like. But I hope the people here will actually take me up on the offer if they're Christians and be happy to, uh, be very happy to debate, debate that question. So the puzzles for me are very deep about why is it that these denominational differences not only exist but have a political dimension and have led to so much bloodshed in Islam and continue to do so. Um, and these stalemates seem to be persisting. To go back to my point, uh, you know, as a philosopher who was, in, who was um, distressed by this, when I subsequently started working seriously upon uh, both um, Shiite Islam and upon Christianity, which I regard 